one to watch is our spotlight on the next big thing in Canadian country music. Let's meet Justin Fancy. I've been performing everyone's favorite country songs for years, and I've decided I'd write my own. I'm so thrilled for you to hear my original music, and I really hope you like what you hear. Hey, I'm Justin Fancy from Conception Bay, South Newfoundland. Thanks, Listen, download, and support. One to watch. Wendy Boomer joined by Justin Fancy, somebody that I have had a pleasure of getting to knowing. And Justin, you are our one to watch. We're so thrilled to hear this song on the air. And just, you know, for people who don't know you as much as I do, uh, we've got an East Coaster here. So I want to hear just a little bit more about your story. Yeah, from a small town in uh, Conception Bay, South Newfoundland. Uh, it's about 15 minutes outside of St. John's. And I'm real proud, uh, real, real proud to be, you know, a part of this. And uh, I just, you know, thank you so much. Oh, God. Well, you're more than welcome. I mean, when you make good music, it's easy to support it. So <laughs> <laughs> so th- where's what's the influences that you grew up on and whatnot? I know you've often played a lot of different festivals and shows and bars and a lot of cover tunes. Um, but uh, what were those kind of songs and sounds that you love to play? Yeah, for sure. So I was definitely a 90s country guy uh, growing up uh, when I when I when I started to learn how to play guitar. Um, I, I took it back to the basics and really started in on, on the old, old country music. Uh, Hank Williams, Hank Snow, George Jones, Willie Nelson, um, you know, the big names that pretty much brought country music to where it is today. And, uh, um, you know, just really started uh, learning the chords and, and, and those songs and, and listening to the stories as much as anything else. I, I love a good country song with a good story. And I mean, a lot of a lot of the country music that I've listened to um, and had the pleasure of listening to and playing over the years at, you know, at bars and pubs and whatever else. I love to tell the stories of these songs. It's uh, it's very important for country music. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really listen to a lot of modern country at that time. Um, you know, growing up when I was 16 till I was about 21, 22, there wasn't any country stations here in St. John's. We had getting rid of the only country station that was here. And uh, so, you know, with the boom of of the Napsters of the world um, and 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 the boom of CDs, I started, you know, burning this music and, and listening to this music um, through through different ways. And uh, and that's you know, that's how I really got into the 90s country. Um, I used to play, I, I had a few CDs in my car and I used to play them over and over and over and over again. I can tell you who those artists were. It was the Alan Jacksons, Vince Gills, Randy Travis. Um, just, you know, I just um, had a real passion for country music when everybody else really was listening to hit stations um, and, and, and pop, you know, at my age, it was just something that I stuck onto. And, uh, and, you know, it's, uh, over the years, I've guess I've you know uh, I've been able to interpret that in a way where I can translate it in my own words and and create my own uh, you know songs and stories uh, about that you know. Well, I mean, East Coasters are definitely known for their storytelling as well. So we've got a really deadly combo here when it comes to you. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I can name a few of those, but I mean, you know, uh, a lot of these artists inspirations to me as well growing up. I mean, you look at Ron Hines and, and the stories and songs that he has told, um, just an icon and uh, uh, even Alan Doyle and and what he's what he's been able to do as an East Coaster and 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 proud guy from Petty Harbor. I mean, I can't say enough. Uh, the guy's a, an inspiration to us all. And uh, I'm hoping to carry that flame on with him, you know. Yeah, well, I, 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 we certainly hope so as well. And so the single is called Makes Me Wanna. What's the story behind this one? Yeah, so I wrote, I actually wrote this song during the recording process of my album. Um, so a few things here. When I started recording this album, um, we were we were not in a pandemic at the time. Um, and and I had, so what, what I planned on doing was trialing with my new producer, Clint Curtis, uh, one song, which was a long time coming, which was a single that I was going to release. And then if all went well with that and, it, and I was pleased with the product, we were going to record an album. Um, so it was kind of a it was kind of a, a, a small plan that turned into a very big plan. Um, so when I when I listened to that first song, I was really, really um, excited about it. And uh, I guess what happened from there was was inspiration for me because I had heard the production and the product and the sound that I've heard in my head for so long that I couldn't recreate. I finally found the right person um, that believed in me, believed in the lyrics and believed in, in my 
composition strategy, um, you know, when it comes to modern day country music, because let's face it, country music is an extremely hard egg to crack. Um, country radio uh, is, is, is a very hard uh, place to crack. You need to be great um, to be able to do something like this. And, and I, you know, I had, I had a dream to, to get there and, and I wanted to get there. Um, and I think we're well underway, but, uh, back to the song. Yeah. So I was, um, that this whole album pretty much was inspired through a breakup. Um, and I wrote a lot of music, um, that, you know, some that are on this album and some that are going to be on albums to come, I'm sure of it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, a, a good friend of mine told me one, one day, um, he said to me, you know, you'll never be a good singer or songwriter if you don't experience a good breakup. Um, and that, that was something that stuck with me for so long. And then it happened to me. And then it was, you know, um, so this song makes me want to is a product of that. Um, and it's it's you know, it basically talks about the frustrations of trying to get over someone. Um, but yet you still got that element of love and that element of, you know, you're thinking about that person and, and, you know, the frustrating part of trying, really trying to force yourself to get over someone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we all know that that makes good music, right? I mean, so now we get to look forward to a falling in love album in the future. So <laughs> <laughs> for right? sure. Uh. Definitely. Uh, well, also, uh, when going back to a little bit of your time or doing so many um, covers and whatnot, I always love asking this question because so many artists have done that, of course, throughout their career. What's the one song or request that you you just never want to play again? Wagon wheel. <laughs> Two words. Two words. I think it's actually been banned on George Street by all the musicians that play it in St. John's. I'm pretty sure it's actually banned. Um Oh my goodness. For all the times that I've played that song, if I had a dollar for every time I played that song, I, I, I you know, I, I'd probably be down in, you know, the Dominican somewhere on a vacation for the rest of my days. Oh boy. When that song came out, it was so good though. When it, when it, when it came out and what, what a great tune. And then Darius Rucker covered it, which was unreal. Great. Love the guy. Um, but it just kind of kept that train going. So every time, I'd go downtown and, 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 you know, I'll play a gig at one of my favorite pubs, whether it be green sleeves or, or, you know, any other pub on the street, there's about 20 of them right in a line, right in the kind of the same place. And, uh, you know, every, it was to a point where it was every single gig I was playing. Um, the song was being requested more than once, not just once more than once. It was just crazy. Great tune. I'm just, I'm over it now. <laughs> and so then what's your favorite one to play? Is there one that you're always like, I can't get enough of this one. Let me down easy. Billy Currington. I, I actually played it at, um, at my show. I had uh, a couple of weeks back there and um, I, I sincerely love this song, everything about it, the, the lyrics, um, the delivery there is just, I don't know. It's just a very great song. I've actually covered it and I've got it on social media and stuff too. And uh, just a great song. Love All right. It. All right. So now we know what to request at a Justin Fancy show. If you're going for <laughs> covers, these we know what not to request and what to request. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, well, I, again, I think uh, we're just starting to get to know you a little bit better. And we're so thrilled to hear your music on the air again as a fan for a long time and knowing how hard you've been working at it. And again, like you said earlier in this chat as well, that, you know, it's you had the sound in your head that you wanted to have you have it and so you should be really proud of what you've put out there and i'm so happy to be able to share it with so many others i'm i'm really thankful for that wendy and, and thanks for believing and supporting in me um you know in the beginning i know we had conversations uh you know a few months back or whatever and uh I just, I just really appreciate it. And I mean, you know, um, the, the, the phone call for me came out of nowhere and it was just a very surreal moment for me to, uh, to, to be featured here. And, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm really hoping that it reaches as many heads as it can. And, uh, and you know, any, any, any feedback or, or anything I can get from, um, from, from anybody else, you know, feel free to reach out because I'm, I'm always looking for that. And I'm always looking for motivation to get better and be better. And I, I think that's extremely important here. This is a, a, an unbelievable opportunity for me. And, and uh, I thank you. And I thank the Rogers team for it. Well, we're again, we're just so happy to have you. So thank you, Justin. Can't wait to hear more from you. Thanks very much, Wendy. Thanks for having me.